Yeah, my name is Pete Dwan, and I uh, I do uh, drug awareness talks in uh, schools, secondary schools, primary schools, colleges, uh, and I go out there and I give uh, kids true facts about drugs. Growing up as a kid, um, I had a great life. I had six brothers and sisters, big family, we were out on holidays, we lived in a nice part of town, um, used to play out in the summer. Typical kid, you know, and a really nice kid. I was good, you know, a really good childhood actually, up until being about 13 years old. When I first started drinking when I was 13, life changed completely, really. All my good reports went into bad reports. Um, I wasn't getting good grades, and uh, also I wasn't getting on with my brothers and my sisters, and didn't get on with my parents, and yeah, things sort of uh, went downhill pretty quickly. Well, when I got into my early 20s, um, I'd been out on a drinking session for three days, drinking and taking different types of drugs and with a whole gang of my mates. And when I come home, I felt really ill. Um, and then when I got up the next day, I was really ill, I, you know, I felt terrible. So I went down to the local hospital and seen the doctor there. He did various tests on me and sat me down and said, um, that your liver stopped working, that's what's wrong with you. And I was like, well, what are you gonna prescribe me then? You know, is it some antibiotics? Is it some tablets, you know, just give us it and I'll, I'll start taking it to feel better. He says, no, it don't work like that, people are going to send you home and he says, either you're going to survive and get well or you're not. When the doctors told me that um, I might die, I'm either going to say, I thought it was short changing me, I thought there must be cutbacks or something. And when I realised what he was telling me that basically, you know, there's nothing they can give me, it doesn't matter where I live, or, you know, or what cutbacks there is, the point is there's nothing they can give you. I was really scared, it, it frightened me. It frightened me and I was 22 years old, you know. The doctor told me, he says, if you keep doing the lifestyle you've got in six months, you'll be dead, mate. And I was like, I need to change something. So I looked for something else to do. And as it was, um, I went training and uh, I found that I got a buzz out of real hard training, going boxing or tie boxing. Um, and that's how I got into it, basically. When I actually competed, I was quite good at it, which was great, you know. So although I didn't actually win all my fights, you know, I did, I did quite well, I won more than a lot. You know, I ended up fighting for England, I represented England in Ireland, and that went really well, great experience. And then I actually ended up fighting for the British title, um, which for me, uh, when, I, when I first started out, I'd never dreamed I'd get that far. You know, when I actually put the belt around my waist and raised my arms in the air, it was one of the biggest buzzes in my life I've ever had. All the people cheering and shouting. The estate I lived on at the time, there was a whole coach load of them come on from the estate and they're all chanting and cheering. It was great. It was a really high point in my life, really. I mean, no one gives you a handbook for life, you know? You sort of try things out and if it works, it works. and. If it doesn't, you try something else, and it's a bit of trial and error, really, through life. When I actually started doing that, I realised that uh, what I'd been through, I could use to communicate to kids um, coming through, because they didn't have the information, as I didn't have the information. And by actually going and giving them my story and also telling them lots of true facts about drugs, then I could make a difference to them. Knowing that um, I'm actually doing something that I, I feel is really important and it's like my purpose um, I just feel really lucky I feel really lucky you know I do believe you make your own luck most definitely but I tell you what I, I've done I've done literally 40 or 50 different types of jobs and I, I've earned you know 10 times what I'm earning doing this and I won't swap it for anything it's so rewarding so rewarding and I say I feel really lucky having been able to do it. I'll tell you a true story. I've got this friend and my friend's got a little two-year-old boy, yeah? And one night my mate sat in his house like this, he's doing his paperwork, the television's on there. Now at the corner of his eye, you can see through to the kitchen. And on the kitchen floor is his little two-year-old, he's got a teddy in his hand and he's playing with his wooden bricks on the floor, yeah? So you've got the scene, there's my mate doing his paperwork like this. Next minute on television comes this advert. 
You ever notice adverts are slightly louder than the other programmes when they come on? Yeah. Well, that's to get your attention. On comes this advert for like Bacardi Breezer or some alcoholic drink and so there's big strong men throwing bottles up in the air or these really good looking ladies all dancing around or this loud music and bright lights and out the corner of his eye he sees this little lad get up with this teddy two years old walk in front of the telly and he starts dancing like this and my mate's going wow would you look at that the music's going everyone's having a good time the kids dancing away there like this next minute the music stops the advert stops the programs come back on the little lad does this goes back in the kitchen and carries on playing with the bricks. My mate thought, what just happened there? This two-year-old, he doesn't understand words properly, but he does understand bright lights, loud music, and everyone having a good time. And at two years old, that advert for alcohol gets his attention. Now, as he becomes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, he gets more and more and more of these images. By the time he's ten years old, does he think that alcohol will be quite a dangerous drug? Or does he think that's what everyone does to have a good time? Which one? Thank you very much. And that's why you don't think of alcohol as a drug, because of the way it's advertised to you.